checks while driving. Do your part. Take the Safer Roads Pledge at OhioLECET.com. Together we can stop distracted driving. Build Ohio right. Build at Union. I'm comedian Gabby Watts, and I'm hosting a new history podcast called American Film, where we're diving into the filthy underbelly of the good old U.S. of A. I'll be talking about a founding father who died from a DIY catheter, the woman who wrote the dirtiest blues song ever recorded, how the pilgrims smelled terrible, and of course, presidents cheating on their wives. All of that and more on American Filth. Listen to American Filth on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. It's time to give stuff away. It's time to give that stuff away. It's time to give stuff away. Give stuff away. All right, Great White and Slaughter are doing a co-headlining run that'll bring them to Cleveland on Saturday night, October the 28th. They're going to be out at MGM Northfield Park. I don't know how many original members are in either of these bands. Great White had like two different things going on for a while. I think it's still Mark Slaughter and Dana Strum and those guys in Slaughter. Anyway, you'd know better than I if you're a fan. LiveNation.com's got all the details on your tickets. I will give you this pair here for being caller 10. Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. These days, you have a million ways to entertain yourself. Are you not entertained? This one just puts entertain in air quotes. I am not entertained. The Alan Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. Three five one nine two. you want to send a text. You can watch live if you like at alancoxshow.com. Guardians baseball late game tonight. They're on the West Coast. Start up against the Giants in San Francisco. 9.45 is the start. So 9.15 if you want to get all of your um, pregame action with Hammy and Rosie and the Hee Haw gang. That's all there. Uh, Next week, I will have Cedar Point tickets to give to you. And um, I was reading about a bunch of guys that got scooped up for breaking into Cedar Point. Over the weekend, they, they, and it wasn't like a Ocean's Eleven style heist. Uh, they just got uh, arrested after jumping the fence. And this can be dangerous too. And that's why they arrest people out there is because they're like, look, we've had it. Remember years ago, the dude that like went to get his cap? Yeah, he got, he got his head cut off. Mm-hmm. So kicked upside off. didn't need, uh, what's that? Yeah, kicked, kicked off. Yep. Someone broke, shattered their leg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but he didn't need the hat anymore. So that was the uh, that was the silver lining in that <laughs> Mr. situation. Mr. Brightside, Alan Cox. That's right. That's me. Uh, five guys ended up going to jail. The whole pizza chain, pizza chain, burger chain, you burgers and fries. Bill, five guys, burgers yeah, and fries. It's the main clean these days, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't even know what it is. Uh, five guys climbed the fence near the corkscrew and Super Himalaya. You know where that is in the park? Yeah, I do, actually. All right. I know right where that is. A ride worker noticed officers. The, the corkscrew is near the Super Himalaya, and the Himalaya, <laughs> the Super Himalaya is right near the corkscrew. Hey, that's what this says. Yeah. You're so good with the mapping. They're kind of right there in the middle. They're by the, what do they got? The the, the sky. Zip line? No, it's like, not like a zip line. It's just like the, uh, I don't know what they call them. They're, they're like little. They're like the little bumper shoots that you. Yeah. An umbrella? Flying. Yeah. You're flying umbrellas. No. What's a bumber shoot? An umbrella. An umbrella? Then yes. No. It's like a little carriage Why in the sky. Why did you call it a bumper shoot? Because I thought, I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pound cake all of a sudden. I already got one of him. I don't need two of him. <laughs> Throwing it, use a words you don't know what they mean. It's like, they're like little things, you know. No? Don't yeah. know. Anyway, I'll take your word for it. Uh, these guys jumped the fence to get in. All five arrested on criminal trespassing charges. Rainback Kiriev. 18-year-old Urasil Turizbek, 21-year-old Almat Begadarov, 20-year-old Yuli Stan Karyev, and 20-year-old Danyar Shankyev. The men are all from Kazakhstan and are on U.S. work visas. Now, they clearly don't work at Cedar Point because they'd be able to go in and out as they please, and the summer season is over. So if you're here, something about this feels fishier than they're giving it credit for. 
Sounds like they stopped the 9-11. A Cedar Point 9-11? Yeah. Well, I mean, it didn't happen today. No. Oh, well. It happened on Friday. Well, then they stopped the yeah. 9-8. 10-9-8? Yeah. They're like, it's illegal because we don't want people getting killed or hurt. or It's a huge safety issue. We don't want somebody underneath a ride so they all get pinched for a trespassing or whatever. But if you're in this country on a work visa, I mean, those can be easily rescinded. You think you'd take a little bit better care of it. All five guys going over a fence. Now, I don't know if it was chain link. It's got to be chain link, right? That's the best kind of chain for a fence. Oh, well, yeah. I've you ever see those pudding link fences? Man, those are easy to get through. I'm so glad they stopped really using them. Hard to build, too. Hard to build. <laughs> And it's super, it's, it, it checks two bad boxes. Hard to stay up, easy to uh, traverse. Well, what's that, Cody? I've, se- I've seen Cedar Point fences before. It's, it's like a tall, it's tall black and it has like stakes yeah. at the top. So I'm surprised that oh. they got over it like that. Because they have like a fenced in beach. I, like when I ride, I forget what a ride is like right there. It used to be like the blue streak, but I don't know what it is. The now. Himalaya? The corkscrew? No. All right. But there's like a beach right there that Cedar Point owns. Cedar Point Shores? Sure. Isn't that what it's called? It's called Cedar Point Shores, The, right? the beach or the ride? Uh, well, isn't is the ride by the beach? Yes, is but it, it's fin- it's behind the black fence that I'm- Oh, is it for. called the beachcomber? No. Oh. Why does the fence got to be black? Because that's what they painted it. Oh, okay. It's the only thing. Thank you for answering my question. Yeah. <laughs> Mary is talking about space buckets. Is that what they're called? Uh, that's what this person says. Who knows? That sounds know. like a terrible name that for a ride, like a but name, uh, it's just like those little. There's like you put like four people on them, and it's just moving on the wires above everybody. Oh, okay. I gotta I get to what, Cedar Point again. You've got to. I haven't been to Cedar Point in years. I haven't been to Cedar Point yet this year. So because I'm like, if the little one is still too short to ride, we're not going out there. I mean, you know, she could go to Snoopy Land. She's seven. She didn't give a rat's ass about Snoopy Land. Snoopy Land is fun. We usually, Gwen and I usually go out for Hollow Weekends. Mm-hmm. It's usually the one time we'll go. But we haven't been in a long time. Well, since I've been spoiled and I, you know, we got to skip the line, I kind of don't want to go back to waiting in lines. Like, it's. I old. need the way. Sky Ride. <laughs> Sky Ride. I need Sky that way. Ride. I was practically vomiting when we did that. It was, it was a lot of fun, but you don't realize that you need the downtime. You need in some between. downtime, yeah. yeah. Maybe not two and a half hours, but you need some. A good thirty downtime. minutes between each ride. Do that. All right, this is for the Alan Cox Show. I hope you all are having a great day today. You all are amazing, and I voted for you guys and gal on the scene thing. But let's get to the real topic at hand. This is a bong rip for America. Here we go. <laughs> oh, that was nice. Oh, crap. oh crap. What did he, I hope he didn't spill his bong water yeah, or anything like gross. that. I don't, I that don't. is gross. He did a bong rip for America. That's. I don't want Alex Jones calling us back. So mad before. What? I don't need to get that high. No bong rips for me. No bong rips for you? No, I don't need to get that high. I'm kind of with you on that. That's a lot. People I don't need like to be to high for for people, these people that are high for fourteen hours. Like it's okay, dude. Smoke weed dude every just day. sleep it off. I'm like, I did sleep it off. It's the You're not gonna day. get that high from one yeah. rip. Yes, I, come high. on. I did. I've if, gotten very yeah, high off a bong. Rips. If you're not oh, used to hitting on. a bong and you take a big rip from a bong, yes, you will be high for twelve hours. Yeah. Well, so what? I don't need to be that high. You're not that busy. I don't need to wait. Yes, I am. <laughs> I am exactly that busy. I don't need to hit it. At, exactly. I don't need to hit the bong at 9 p.m. and then be high. For, Wake up. Yeah. yeah. At at 11 p.m. Like it starts to wear off at 11 a.m. I don't need that. That's too long. Wow. Well, now we know. Yeah, just like a little bit of high. Oh, wow, okay. Like a little bit of high. Not a full on rip. High. People like to be real high. I like to be a little bit of high. Just, just a bit, like to to where I know that I understand that I'm high. Like mm-hmm. I, if I'm thinking crazy, I'm like, oh. Cody, you're high. Like, it's no big deal. But if I'm a bo- when I hit a bong, I don't know that I'm high. Like, I can't focus on the fact that I'm high, you're freaking out, you're paranoid. Just chill. All right, well, maybe you're smoking crappy weed, but I just. <laughs> no. 
Okay. Well, now we know. Hmm. If I can't talk, Bill. You can't work. (laughs) (laughs) That's when I was doing bong rips in the the studio. Remember that, Bill? That's what messed up the board. I know. Well, it was a couple years ago, but it was... It was worth looking into. That's why I asked him when we moved down here. I go, is it cool if I'm still doing bong rips in the studio? Is that going to mess with any of our brand new software-based equipment? And they said, oh, no, it's pretty impermeable. Nothing's going to get to that. The only way you'll get high is, <laughs> we were like, you can get high and reach the cloud that all our stuff is stored in. So that's great. Indeed. You figured it out. They're trying to get pot off the Schedule 1, trying to uh, not make it a Schedule 1 drug anymore, which I don't know why this is even a question anymore. It's not the same as heroin but it's still considered a Schedule One drug, so they're trying, like the U.S. Health Department is talking to the DEA. I'm sure the DEA has their own concerns about that, too. But uh, they're like, yeah, w- this has been ridiculous for too long. Mm-hmm. I have a question, and it, it might be stupid, but Ooh, yeah. it's my favorite kind. You can get a DUI by, while sm- like being high off yeah. a pot, right? Yeah. yeah it, it, how yeah. would you, how will they know if you're high? Because it's not the same. You don't act the same as being drunk when you're high. Well, first of all, your car is going to smell like it. But I'm saying, say say you smoked it a, a, a bong yeah. rip at, at your house, and then you're like, oh, I'm I'm totally fine. To or you did an edible or, or something or like that. Yeah. How uh, would they test you for that? They ask you what you're listening to. <laughs> and then when you go to turn it up, and, Fish. And, and yeah, and they're like, get ah. out of the car, sir. <laughs> You're like, ah, man. <laughs> please, <laughs> please get out of the car. Yeah, how would they do that? Because, like, you may have THC in your system, but it doesn't mean you're high right now. So how would they test that? Well, I, I don't know. Really it depends on if they, if, yeah. if they think that you're operating the vehicle under the influence. I mm-hmm. mean, if you're not, probably in the same way that they determine somebody, they don't know somebody's drunk until they, you know, well, you can they the lines. give you a yeah. They no, give but you, a, you but but the, but I'm saying step one is you see a car that's like weaving around. Yeah, if they give you a breathalyzer and you ask if there's a carb on it, they're like, "Up, oh, we got you." Nailed it. I read. Don't worry. Be happy. There you go. Nailed Every little it. thing. Every little. <laughs> Maybe they give you a whiz test, right? Because they got to figure out what the there is a limit of it in your. Sir. I'm sure. I, I'm sure somebody who's gotten. Yeah, I'm sure somebody who's gotten busted will call us and tell us. So or whatever. They just say that they're going to Taco Bell and ask if you want anything. And <laughs> they use blood tests to show THC levels. People mm. are telling me. There you go. They take your blood right there on the side of the road? That's what I'm saying. What if I refuse? <laughs> well, then they snap you up right away. I mean, yeah, they just shoot you and then I'm like, they... <laughs> I'm like, bro. We needed some blood. Uh-huh. But that's not how you're supposed to get it. Oh, like, no. I have been poorly trained. <laughs> Sir, are you operating on the influence? No. Are you sure? <laughs> All mm-hmm. eight hours of my cop course, though. That's what they told me. Yeah, right. <laughs> My afternoon of <laughs> firearm training and de-escalation. Yeah. But again, if they pull you over, you know, your car is probably going to smell like it. Or you're going to smell like it. Number one is to be cool. You just like... Be what's cool, up? man. What's up, officer? What's up? What's, what's the problem? They'll never see through that. <laughs> Got both hands on my wheel. I'm like, I'm 10 and 2, sir. I'm 10 and 2, homie. What's up? The ride by the beach is the gatekeeper. Used to be disaster transport. I yeah. love the gatekeeper. There was a ride called disaster transport. It the, yeah, it was the yeah. indoor one. That one was badass. It was had air well, actually, it wasn't badass. It was just air conditioning. Yeah. So you could go there yeah, was, on the hot days and stay in there and cool down for a little while. That was an in between ride, like w- yeah. between a ride that, that you was really want to do. Yeah, you go in there, you sit, take a break, um, and then we have you, some fries. Mm-hmm. Have, have stuff, some fries. <laughs> they have stuff painted on the wall, so it's real scary. Yeah. Alan Marijuana was made a class one narcotic because of racism and jazz music. Oh, I know. That's why they've spent the better part of 
you know, three or four decades trying to get it off Schedule 1. Every drug was made illegal because of jazz and racism. Yeah, that reefer madness. Yeah! Yeah, so um, anyway, uh, your mission, listener, should you choose to accept it, is to uh, blow a bong rip into Pound Cake's face when you see him out in public. They won't have the same effect. He's, huh? They won't have the same effect. Well, again, I still reject on principle that you're high for 12 hours from a bong rip. But listen, you do you. You know yourself better than anybody else does. Yeah, I know my body. My body. (laughs) I know my body. Yeah. Better than anybody else. Yeah. Al and I recently started smoking again. I took a bong hit, and I was high for about two or three hours. Well, I guess the follow-up question is, how long is too I mean, 12 is an extreme example. It's not mushrooms. But how long is too long for you? Mine was definitely from 9 to 9. 9 to 9. Well, 9 then that would be to too long. Right. That's going to impa- That's going to just carve out half your day. Because, like, literally, I went, I went to sleep. And then I woke up. I'm like, I, I thought it was the greatest thing ever because I slept well. I'm like, I'm just going to go to sleep and not be high anymore. And I just feel great. It's like sleeping on a cloud. And then I woke up and I didn't I didn't know if it was grogginess. Like if I, you know, when you first wake up, you feel kind of lightheaded and high. So it was no big deal. And then I was driving and I'm like, wow, like I feel funny. Like I'm, I must have like a, I don't know. I just felt weird. And then the road started looking all like speckly. I'm like, <gasps> speckly. I'm like, you're high. I was like, okay, don't freak out. Don't freak out. And I got to work, and I was like not drawing attention to myself. I was like, don't act high. Don't do anything. So I didn't say nothing to nobody. I'm not my normal bubbly self. <laughs> I didn't get coffee. I just sat at my desk just chilling. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm high. And, yeah, it was not a pleasant experience. I do not want to do that again. Hmm. That's a weekend activity only The only in time my house. I was that high, I ate three edibles. They were... It wasn't one bong rip like you're describing, but they were tiny little, like, bite-sized Rice Krispie Treat balls, like maybe the size of a bouncy ball. And the piece of paper next to them, it was at a party, even said, like, eat one, wait, wait more, and then try again. I ate one, and I waited, like, over an hour. It was, like, an hour and a half. I didn't feel anything, so I ate the second one. And then, like, 45 minutes after that, I still didn't feel anything. Oh so you're talking two hours and 15 minutes from the time mm. I ate the first one. You were dominoing your edibles. So I ate the third like one, and then it was, like, a half hour after I ate the third one that I started to feel high, and I was like, oh, no, this is the first one. Mm-hmm. Like, it took two and a half hours to kick in. <laughs> oh, no, this and is the first that's one. That's how I felt where I was like, if I'm just mm. now getting high, that means, and I was high all night into the next day, and we had to go to a birthday party for my ex's, like, 87-year-old grandmother. Stuff to do. You can't well, that be was high the thing. for that long. I woke up still, like, blown out of my mind, like, just as high as when I went to bed. And I was sitting down in the shower crying, and my ex came in, and he's like, what is wrong with you? I was like, dude, I cannot talk to your family today. Like, I'm so friggin' high. And, and he's like, on, there's no way. I'm like. That's on whoever made the Rice Krispies. Like, it should not two take and a half two hours, hours to, kick, hours to in? kick in. It should not. That's what I thought. Yeah, no I was like, they, they usually, 45 minutes is usually about what it takes for nobody, an edible. And nobody's looking to wait that long. It like, you want to get going. You want to get gonna, going. Well, it's going to take you a little while. It's not going to be, like, two minutes. Because your body has to digest it. So usually but between 30 minutes and an hour is what it'll be for an Nobody edible. wants to wait two and, two and, and a half, half hours. hours. No, that's it. I remember, I remember it vividly. I was sitting in the basement of my old house watching uh, watching The Office, just waiting to get high. And then I did, and I was like, oh, no, I made a mistake. Mary, what you doing? Oh, I'm just waiting to get high. Just waiting for my drugs to kick in. <laughs> drugs I to kick in. I, I just hate I, drug. When I do such edibles or bongs or whatever, that is the activity. The, getting high is the activity. Well, that's I what I wanted. Wanna, I don't then want to go on a hike. I don't want to go. What do you What do you want to do now? You want to watch a movie? It's a, a high activity. These people that just function high, like you guys, are otherworldly. Because I can't do that. No, I didn't plan on going to the 87th birthday high. That's just what I <laughs> ate three of happened, them. Yeah. You know, that's just what happened. Gremlins in. What medication are you on? It seems excellent. I sat alone with one Corona, like out on the porch the whole time. <laughs> I didn't talk to anybody. It was super quiet, <laughs> sitting by myself. We were at a birthday party for Dan Kensinger, one of our uh, esteemed salespeople here on Saturday afternoon. I had to. It's his I, birthday today, right? It or is. Was it? Yeah, there was yeah. a party for him on Saturday mm-hmm. and uh, in Lakewood. And so. Um, the what's that? 
Anyway, uh, <laughs> and so I see Doogie walk in, and I'm talking to her for a little bit. But then, like, she's just staring. I go, is the edible kicking in, or what's happening here? She's like, I don't know what that means. I go, okay. That's... But I thought for sure, as I was talking to her, I'm like, something's kicking in here. But apparently not. Apparently she was just staring at me in a strange I would, way. Fumigation from the bed bugs? I have no idea. I would love to see Douchey on a on a uh, edible. Yeah, I don't think that that's what it was, but I certainly was getting that vibe, and then she assured me that that's not what was going on. I don't on. know what that means. I, <laughs> I've got to take a break. If you want to send a text, 35192. You can go to alancoxshow.com and hit us up there, too. The Alan Cox Show. <laughs>